In late July 2018, I was joined by my brother Rod and two brothers-in-law, Harold and Henty, on a six-day canoe trip in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park in northwestern Ontario. We'd done many previous trips into this paradise, but this time we started our trip with a flight from Red Lake, flying over a still-burning boreal landscape and landing in the suitably named Adventure Lake. From there, we spent the next five and a half days paddling through WCPP landmarks such as Haven, Wrist, Mexican Hat, Glen, Optic, Telescope, Jalmar, and finally Oni Lake. Our last night in Oni Lake was a wild one with severe thunderstorms slamming into our island site and threatening to topple trees in our flimsy tents. The crazy weather certainly didn't make me feel any better about my plans to spend the next week alone in this wilderness. If I'm honest about it, I was very, very close to jumping in my truck and following the outfitter van down the road as I watched it disappear into the shimmering summer air in a cloud of dust. Put it this way, the next five days would be spent learning a lot about myself and about the myths and realities of solo canoe adventuring. After already portaging a thousand meters to get the rest of the group to the Suffolk Lake Road, I planned my first solo day as a relatively short one, turning back on the route I'd just finished, back into Oni Lake and onto the site I'd just come from that morning. Well, the moment I've been waiting for for many, many, many years is here. Oni Lake, solo trip. Just me, man. No one else out here. Oh yeah, baby. Pretty excited, pretty nervous. Boys took off about 15 minutes ago. I've been packing furiously. Time to head her. Dreaming of this moment for many years. It's a little weird to be experiencing it, I'm not gonna lie to you. See how she goes. There's only one way to find these things out. One nervous foot in front of the other. I'm walking every portage trail to Oni six times today. Look at this. See you later. Ten days from now, I will be changed. That was not necessarily the way I wanted to start my solo trip, racing a line of fast approaching thunderstorms, but I made it. Boat's tied up, upside down. I think we're ready to rock and roll. I gotta set my tent now a minute. Camp set up. Nice, thunder's still rolling, but I'm gonna try for a tarp. I mean, it's totally possible that that one missed me. Yes. First things first though, in case I really get hammered, I'm gonna move that canoe to the other side of that tree. The key to being safe solo, lots of attention to details like this. That canoe is tied to that far tree over there, but the wind can still whip it around, blow it into the water. Waiting for the tea storms to hit on Oni. So far they've rumbled north, and they've rumbled south. Probably just a matter of time. First day solo on Oni. It's around two o'clock. Been hearing thunder for about an hour and a half, which was not a pleasure on the 600 meter portage, I can tell you that. That sucked a bit. But I learned how to portage solo real quick, so that was good. Now I'm just waiting to get hit. I've managed to get camp pretty much set up. Tarp is up, I don't know how much good that's gonna do, but got some dry wood under there. Coffee water's on, so you know you've made it when the coffee water's on. If I go back here, this is where the tent sites are. We got hit pretty good last night, which ironically, I thought it would make me more scared for today or tentative at least but actually it didn't because we made it you know it wasn't easy but we made it and that's the important part so yeah here's the tent site yeah pretty nice well <laughs> here I sit 
It's not totally the way I wanted to start my uh, solo trip, to be honest. Um, huddled in my mid in a thunderstorm. Chance of strong thunderstorms today, apparently. That's the last I heard. I, I had a message from Hun, but it was downloading as the rain started, so I'll download that one later. Interesting. That's the best way to describe it. Yeah. Interesting emotions. Um, I feel pretty good. I actually do. I'm a little nervous. I mean, I do have a thunderstorm right above my head right now, and I'm all alone in the middle of nowhere, but to be honest, these things don't happen overnight. I've been planning this for a long, long time. I remember walking down the beach in Cuba even, thinking about this moment, how it would feel, and it's actually pretty cool to be here. Yeah. It's lonely. Well, it's solitary. It's not lonely. I definitely feel like I'm alone. Um... But I don't feel scared. I don't feel bad about it. Um, I, I know I'm going to have to go with some crappy moments. I mean, this is this is one of them. Um, I'm going to have to deal with storms and muck and and wind and, and doubts. Um, but that's what makes these trips worthwhile doing. If they were easy, everybody would do them. So I'm going to uh, read my book for a while. Read some Game of Thrones. Probably uh, eat some munchies. It's a cozy tent, paddle fits perfectly, protects me perfectly from the rain. I feel good about it, I feel good about it, over and out. Couple hours of this already. Finally got out of the tent to give things a look. It's definitely calmed down quite a bit, but the rain has settled in. And very interestingly, I uh, saw two canoers crossing the lake in this shit. So every time you think you have it bad, another well, poor sucker has it worse. Still raining. Yeah. Not too bad for tea storms right now, but definitely still raining. So I'm going to cook up some supper here. I just saw two two canoers, poor bastards, out in this weather. Thunder going off, going for the island beside me here. So. That's where the other two guys are staying. I can hear them talking. But they're definitely there. Paddling like mad across there in a thunderstorm. <laughs> and there's blue sky headed my way. So temporary, uh, temporarily at least, things are looking up. And I'm eating Nico's favorite, Mr. Noodles beef flavor. <laughs> that looks really disgusting. I'm hungry though, tastes good. Over and out. We got dead air now. Tea storms are done. Sun is coming back. It is hot and humid though again. Very humid. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful night. After the storm, I guess, eh? Good morning on my favorite rock, having breakfast on Oni. Real breakfast, oatmeal. Yum, yum. Beautiful day, uh, cloudy, which is what I suspected today. I mean, there's a 90% chance of rain today. So, hoping, uh, hoping for to go fishing for a little while. Have a coffee, read my book. Today's all about just relaxing, getting into the backcountry feel of being alone. And uh, tomorrow I'll push on and go to a new lake. So we'll see what today brings. And yeah, I'm going to enjoy it. Over and out. 
Well, that's familiar. More rain. <laughs> what a start to my trip. Solo part of it. Rain most of the day yesterday, and actually you haven't had a lot of rain today. But it's definitely started up now again. See the sky's gotten pretty dark. Pressure's rising, so I think the weather has to be improving, but not yet. So here I sit with my book. At least I'm dry. Supper time. Day two solo trip, Sunday, August 5th. Ugh, what a gray, dreary day. Yeah. Sorry about that, my finger. Only good news is that the humidity has definitely dropped and there is definitely a north wind. So I'm hoping that this is the end of the shit weather. It's been a pretty dreary start. Hopefully things will be sunnier tomorrow. Five o'clock, Monday morning. Ready to head out. Not quite, need to pack up. It's dark, but by the time I'm ready to go, it's gonna be substantially lighter, obviously. So yeah, let's get at her. Well, it's about six o'clock in the morning. Monday, cloudy, of course. Probably rainy later, but beautiful right now and calm. Time to paddle out of, I don't even know if it's Douglas Creek or Oni Creek or what, but we're paddling down it, so. Off I go, me and my trusty steed. As I finally stepped off the island where I'd hunkered down for the previous two days, I felt like I was finally getting into my solo trip. I did not look back as the smooth blade of my otter tail dipped into the dark waters and started the song of the paddle. Today would take me down Douglas Creek, through the south end of Douglas Lake, and up the length of Hatchet Lake before getting into new, for me, WCPP landscapes. I was hoping to make it through Peterson Lake and set up camp on an island in Page Lake for my third night alone. Exiting Oni, down Douglas Creek. Beautiful Monday morning, starting down Douglas Creek from Oni Lake to Douglas Lake. And it's raining. It is actually raining. I thought it would today. Good morning. Monday morning. Ooh, what is it? Oh, 7.30 already. I've been paddling for about an hour and a half. I think I'm probably about six, seven or eight feet damp already, so obviously I'm... A fucking good solo paddler. I've gotten lucky with the weather. Uh, there's no wind. I'm with the current on Douglas Creek, so there's that. Hey, I can paddle with the current down a creek. Look at me. I'll admit, I was a little bit disenchanted with the rain this morning. I can see the clouds lightening a little bit. Lightening, not lightning. Um, it's a beautiful morning, the fog's rising, we're sitting off the water. Ducks are out, beavers are out. I really got nothing to complain about except for this 30 meter portage that's coming up. So I will talk to you later, over and out. 30 meter portage, Douglas Creek. Little 30 meter portage along Douglas Creek. Yeah, for this one, I'm not gonna bother overdoing it with the gear. I'll just make multiple trips. We'll bust it down boat. Some motorboats from the lodge. Fairly bony section of Douglas Creek. I'm not sure if I can paddle the whole thing or not. I'll do my best. 
apologize in advance for any cursing. <laughs> There's probably some rocks in here. Part of me still can't believe I'm out here. I'm telling you. I knew there'd be doubts. I underestimated it. There's no doubt about that. It's big country, it's lonely country. I don't know, it's just, it's something else. Douglas to Hatchet. Now, I remembered this thing being pretty steep and apparently I was bang on. <laughs> steep and thanks to this morning's rain, very, very slick. And thanks to me docking at the campsite instead of the portage start, I added about 50 meters to it. So, hey, it's all in a day's work. But yeah, as you can see coming up here, not something to screw around with, with all these slick, mossy rocks and everything else. Be very, very careful, especially when solo. Hatchet Lake. Might fish a little bit on my way up this sucker. Hatchet is another one of my favorite lakes with them here. I actually haven't been in it that much, but it's been kind to me with wind. Once again today, I'm with it. And behold, there was sun. Hatchet is always good to me. And I am now venturing into territory I haven't canoed before. The uh, northern stretches of Hatchet Lake. Towards Peterson, and the way my day is going, it really, really looks like I'm going to make my island camp in Page. Right there is the portage to Peterson, 325. Between Hatchet and Peterson Lake. Absolute pleasure. Best portage trail of the whole trip. No doubt about it. It's amazing. 325 meters. I can honestly tell you it felt like a hundred. Wow, it was just very gently braided through the trees and it just happens to be that I'm going downhill. Lovely Peterson Lake. Very nice. Portage between Peterson and Page. And here's my first look at Page Lake. <sighs> We're on the lovely looking Page Lake. The weather's sure looking nice here. So I am paddling, hopefully to camp at this point. The wind today has been fantastic. So I'll take it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous little lake here. Love already. Just going around the island to make sure that the site I saw was the main one. Looks like it is. Campsite on Page Lake. I mean, it's a beauty of a spot. To be honest, I can't figure out why it's not more used. But uh, it's definitely gonna need some cleaning up. Hasn't been used for a while. It's okay, I need firewood, so I'll get all these trees out of the way. And then, uh, that's probably my tent site. A little bit of clearing, we'll be good to go. Perfect. Bed of moss, 
Ah, look at these views. Pretty hard to beat that. Better than the office. And to the sound of nothing. Tough life on Page Lake. But I cannot think of a better place to be right now than in my hammock. Well, here I am on uh, Page Lake. Beautiful lake. Beautiful lake. Um, yeah, you can see. Absolutely gorgeous lake. Gorgeous night. It's probably around 6.30 now at night. I got up at 4.30 this morning. By 6, I was gone. <clears throat> Six hours later, I was here. A lot quicker than I expected, to be honest. And one of my better days out here. Um, I'd actually say the best day. Um, I think today is my eighth day out here in Woodland Caribou. And today was the best one. Um, it started out pretty shitty. I'm not going to lie to you. Clouds, rain. Wind. Ugh, I was not a happy camper when I was paddling down Douglas Creek, as you can probably hear on some of my other video. But by the time I uh, was done hatchet and portaging into Peterson, the clouds were thinning. By the time I was done Peterson and getting into Page, things were looking up. Page definitely has been nice to me, while the, all the lakes were nice to me today. No wind where I didn't need wind, current where I needed current, and wind in the right direction. Uh, when I did get it, so very, very good day. I'm back to reading. Many hours spent reading. <laughs> I've done more reading in the last few days than I've probably done in the last few years, to be perfectly honest with you. But that's why I'm out here. I fished. I caught a bunch of big, big northerns. No walleye. I'm not sure there is walleye on uh, this lake. I forgot to check before I left. I'm going to Crystal tomorrow. I think Crystal might have walleye. There's a lot of campsites there, so there's only one campsite here, pretty rustic. I cleaned it all up. Got tons of firewood ready to go. I'm going to light the fire in about 20 minutes or so. Spend a couple hours just chilling by the fire, and then I'm going to go to bed on a very soft, mossy bed. Uh, I'm really missing hunting the kids, the dogs, in that order. Um... But feeling good. Feeling really good, to be honest with you. Um, it's quite the thing being all out here all alone. It's just you. There is nothing else. I've had two planes, a helicopter and a float plane fly over me, but that's it today. I mean, it's it's been me and the bugs and the loons and the beavers. I saw a, four, a family of four uh, muskrats, which was pretty, pretty cute this morning. But uh, that's it. That's it. Pretty, pretty quiet. I'd say lonely, but it's lonely is, is, is the wrong word. I'm alone, but I'm not lonely. Listen to that bird. See, I, I got birds keeping me company. I got flies keeping me company. I'm, I'm not alone. Yeah, I'm alone. I'm talking to flies. Later. Nice morning, Tuesday morning, Page Lake. Windy from the, I don't even know, southwest maybe. But very warm already at 7 o'clock in the morning. Slept really well, as I knew I would on my bed of moss. <clears throat> you can see I've cleaned it out pretty nice compared to my video from earlier. Didn't take too much. The mid just fit. Nice bed of moss. There's a lot of blowdown in here, though. I mean, look at this place. It's a bit of a mess. Hasn't been stayed at in a few years for sure. So, yeah. Moving on to Crystal Lake, which is not a big day at all. Probably be there by coffee time, I would think. 
So time to pack up the tent. Today would be a relatively short one, traveling from Page Lake through Bell and into Crystal Lake, where I hope to set up camp on an island site and do some quality fishing. Out of the wind on Page Lake, headed for the portage. Hot morning, Tuesday morning. Beautiful lake. I really like this lake a lot. Lots of blowdown. It's ready to burn, but she's nice right now. Taj is in there somewhere. <laughs> the, the trick is to find it. I think I see it over there. First to get through. Noish, noish, noish. Little puzzle for the morning. Yeah, this is where things always get a little bit interesting. Creeks, portage is starting from creeks. Good thing I ate my oatmeal this morning. The portage trail. But man, that is not obvious. <laughs> Actually, it's a nice little portage when you can find it. The streams choked up earlier. So interestingly enough, the official portage trail is different on the map too. So everybody's a little bit confused. Nice enough, nothing wrong with the trail. Once you find it, well, like I said, the trail has been changed. So. Yeah. Nice little lake on the way to uh, the creek paddle to Bell Lake. This is just a little pot lake. Probably loaded with pike. Definitely loaded with weeds. Starting the little creek out of uh, lots towards Bell. It's between Page and Bell. Gorgeous little area actually. Not very many people want to paddle through here because I see lots of opportunities to build cool little camps here and I don't see any camps. It's good to know though that you can make a bush camp here. Works for me. Very useful in certain situations. Yesterday I got good wind, which is good because I had a long ways to go. Today I'm paddling pretty hard. Still on my way to Bell. It's beautiful, long, narrow channel. I'll try to show it so go a bit. I think I'm just coming to the end of it, but yeah, it's pretty sweet. Bell Lake, another gorgeous semi old growth. 30 years, maybe, on a square. Gorgeous lake, though. Clear, deep. I'm surprised to see no evidence of camping on any of these lakes. Very interesting. I'm excited to get into Crystal. Find the portage. In there somewhere. Nice little blaze in the tree. Portages and woodland caribou. They're usually clear once you find them. Finding them can be interesting. Look for a blaze or a clearing. A lot easier than the last one. Portage trails are very well maintained in WCPP. Every once in a while you get a stubborn tree. That's definitely going to impact my carry. So I am going to chop this sucker down with my Gransfer's Brook mini hatchet. It's small, but it's up to the task. Problem solved. Transfer's mini hatchet. No problem. Probably a little four incher, six inch. Out of the way. Free carry now. Doing the carry between Bell and Crystal. Pretty nice little carry. I think it's 175. Not even sure. It's a little marshier than I expected, but... A little bit of bog valley. With the canoe on your head. It's always fun. You always gotta be careful on these. Ooh. 
There we go. Nice. The relatively short paddle across Crystal Lake to my camp was a good first test of solo paddling against a stiff breeze. The light carbon boat proved difficult to control with this type of side wind. Not a huge surprise. Nice, nice campsite on Crystal. That's Crystal Lake. Landed on this little windy outcrop. Right, and thought maybe this was the whole camp. But no, no, no. Could be argued. This isn't the camp at all. The camp is this way. And it's a beauty. As you can see, protected from the south wind anyway. Nice fire pit. I could have landed there next time, maybe. I don't actually mind being here. Tent site. Whew. That is a beaut. That is a real beauty. Pretty happy with this site. Pretty darn happy. Time to set up camp. Well, here I am on uh, Crystal Lake. Pretty nice day. Um, the paddle was good. It was definitely uh, windier than the other day, uh, by quite a long shot, actually, um, in the sense that I was against the wind instead of with it. The paddle was short, like I expected. The portages were a little more, especially the first one was a little mankier than I expected, but still got here in about three hours, and I've been hanging around camp ever since. It's about 3.30 now. <sighs> one thing I'm realizing with solo trips when it's actually there's a lot of conditions that strand you at camp and I love reading I mean you know I I've been doing a lot of reading meditating journaling and that's all great um, but I don't need 14 or 16 days of that um, I like moving and today as sunny and nice as it is I'm completely windbound right now the 40 50 kilometer an hour wind just howling through and it's just not a lot you can do with that. You can fight it, but there's really no point. Um, I was hoping to do a bunch of fishing here. That was kind of my plan. So now I'm hoping to do that either tonight or tomorrow morning when I head back to Upper Hatchet. I'm now thinking a Saturday or Sunday exit, um, which is a little bit shorter than I was originally planning, but we'll see. It's all weather dependent. I could still get stranded for a couple of days depending on the weather. Um, or on the other hand, if it's not windy on telescope, maybe I'll fish it for two or three days. Like, there's nothing wrong with that either. So the main thing I don't want is being windbound or rainbound or stormbound. Um, just gets old after a while. To be honest, I expected more stable weather in August. Not a big deal. I'm loving it out here. I mean, even paddling against some wind this morning on a cool little channel out of Bell Lake, I was I was having a good time. Um, I really was, and I still am. Um, like I said, I just, I'm not made for sitting around. I, I got to get out and actually do stuff. And I've been sitting around for probably about six hours now on this little island. And definitely some storm clouds building now, but I'm actually hoping that if anything moves through, it's just going to calm down the winds a little bit and I can go fishing after supper and find out if there's any walleye in here. Um, but it's going great. Um, like I said, the paddle this morning was really good. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow's a fairly long day, actually. Five good-sized portages and trying out a new campsite on uh, Upper Hatchet, hopefully. Weather pending. I'll uh, text Han later and find out. So, yeah, back to my book. Over and out. Finally, the winds died down. It's around quarter to eight now on Tuesday in Crystal Lake. Beautiful, beautiful lake. Would have been nice to get out and go fish it. I might actually go for a little bit yet tonight. Otherwise, tomorrow's a pretty long day. So, gorgeous evening though. It's nice to have a nice night. Well, it's an early one today. I don't think it's quite six o'clock yet. The sun's obviously just starting to come up on Crystal Lake. Humidity is way up, and I mean way up. There is some indication that we'll get some rain today, but I packed up everything dry, which is nice. 
We'll see what happens. Good sleep, good camp. Yeah. Off into the wild once again. After a pretty restless and angst-filled night, I ended up going much further on my 10th day in Woodland Caribou than originally planned. I paddled out of Crystal Lake on glass before continuing through Bell, Page, and Peterson and into Hatchet Lake. I portaged into Upper Hatchet, aka Caribou Lake, before continuing on to the oddly named Embryo Lake. Bucking a stiff wind, I made it to the southwest end of this lake before one last portage and a short paddle to a deluxe island site on Telescope. I traveled over 32 kilometers with many portages and still made it to camp by 1500 hours, proving that solo travel doesn't necessarily mean slow travel. My 10th total and 4th solo night in WCPP was the official lose it night for me. Sitting here now months, and even years, later, back in the concrete jungle, I am amazed to read my own journal from that night. I can't for the life of me remember why I found sitting on a warm island in the middle of nowhere, all by myself, with a good book and a cigar, stressful, but obviously it was at the time. I have been thinking a lot on this trip over the past few years, and this is the one thing that surprises me the most. I really thought that I was prepared for spending time alone in the wild, but apparently I have to go through a long and slow learning process just like everyone else before I'll be comfortable doing it. In a weird twist, this night was one of the quietest of my solo trip. No storms, wind, or anything, yet it proved to be the ultimate reason for ending it much earlier than I originally planned. More details will emerge as we work through the day on Wednesday. Heading out of Bell Lake. Route back to Page. If you remember the video from yesterday, this looked quite a bit different. Bucking a pretty strong wind. <laughs> Last today. Right here can't get through that mess so now it sneaks through on that side an extra I don't know 50 meters or so and the funny part is on my map the real trail is that way and it's substantially longer than either of the trails so I'll be fixing this one on paddle planner we are back in the minor suck it is the Creek to Page Lake. Now, it's going to be easier than yesterday because I'm with the current today. You'd be surprised so much difference that makes. It's always a lot of work. Nice Page Lake. Look at that glass. That's what we like. We're always pessimists so here. We never count on that last number. It was actually supposed to be windiest this morning. So I'm not sure if the wind's already hit, if it's gonna hit, or if it hasn't hit yet. So it's all good. No panic, just enjoy it. Just ready for paddling with the wind. There's only a tiny little breeze. Yeah, that makes a difference. Yeah, pretty pumped. Here's some in Hatchet. Hatchet Lake's always nice to me. Today's no different. Coming up on the 450 portage from Hatchet, Upper Hatchet. Tell this must be on the fishing circuit because there's a ribbon tied around a tree and it's never that obvious. <laughs> there you go. Portage from Upper Hatchet to Hatchet. It says 450, felt like 500 to me. Pretty nice portage actually. Bit of everything as you'd expect in half a K. 
through Canadian Shield, up through Birch Bark and Pine Forest, into some bog later on. Yeah, pretty nice. Yo, yeah, babe! Ironically, most people are scared probably of the portages more than anything else because they're running into bears or moose or whatever. Just saw two moose on the other end of this thing. But uh, I don't know, I guess my experience in the Rockies hey! has kind of taught me. Bears aren't really the ones to be afraid of out here. Even if I did run into one. Um, it's weather, weather, weather. All about conditions. In general, bears want no part of you. And I'm honestly not nervous walking through the bush on my own. That's kind of the least of my worries on this trip, to be honest with you. Ah, first wind of the day. As I knew there would be. Giving a west wind, crossing over hatchet. So, here we go. Well, here I am, Upper Hatchet Lake. Oh, it's been a good morning already. I don't know if you can see me. It's <laughs> pretty bright out here. But um, I'm definitely smelling some uh, forest fire smoke and seeing the haze in the air. It was a strong west wind yesterday and a strong west wind today. Who knows what that means? I don't know. Um, I haven't been told that, I've kicked, that I'm kicked out yet, so whatever. <sighs> this lake was a lot of work why I'm eating. <laughs> Mr. Noodle, baby. Mr. Noodle. Thanks to my kids. Oh my god. This stuff's nasty. It's 400 calories though, man. I need it after that paddle. That was... This canoe is absolutely amazing. Kevlar epoxy. Carbon Tech Quitico. 16 foot. Um... Suris River. It's amazing in a lot of ways. It is not amazing in wind solo. <laughs> uh, if you're with the wind, it's amazing. But if you're trying to go sideways or even into it, it just, it's too light. It blows around. You know, a 35 pound boat is just not heavy enough to track well in a lake. It tracks well in a calm lake. So, not complaining. I'm going pretty far today. It's only around 11 o'clock. Um, I left at six, so that's five hours of pretty hard travel already. Um, I've done one, two, three, four, five portages, including a 350 and a 450 and a few smaller ones. And then we've got a 450 and a 200 left to get to telescope. Got to go down Embryo Lake, thankfully with the wind most of the way. Otherwise I'd be a little, little more nervous about that one, but I think it's going to be good. And Hun actually tells me that the uh, wind is supposed to die down. so. That's another reason to have lunch and just enjoy. Upper Hatchet, campsite that we've stayed at before. 2016, we stayed here. Going the other direction. Found a nice lake trout here then too. But uh, yeah, it's been a good day. Very good day actually. I love, I love the tripping part. I definitely love, love, love the tripping part. So I'm going to finish my uh, Mr. Noodles before it tastes even worse cold. <laughs> that stuff's horrible. <laughs> Over and out. Not all portages are fun and games. <laughs> Starting the portage from Upper Hatchet to Embryo. Gorgeous day. Shitty portage, very mucky. Oh well, best get at it. Portage between Embryo and Upper Hatchet. I could call this one the 
don't know if these trees are aspen. It's it's bushy. To be honest though, it's actually pretty easy. Um, I don't think this one feels as long as the other one. I still think the other one's 500 or this one's 400 and that one's 450. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, good portage, but like I said, very, very jungly feeling, but nice, nice in the shade. Yo, burp. Cut them. Burp. Oi. Right. That 450 took some work. But we are on embryo. I think I bit off a little more than I thought. This paddle today. Finally. That was long. I last portage of the day comes in the second. One of those silver boats. Oh the portage from embryo to telescope's a little ner a little Thin. I was going to say gnarly. It's not gnarly. It's just thin. Probably a little longer than 200. Too, just thanks to the... Being very dry. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bushy. But last portage of the day. Long, long day. I can't believe I actually paddled that. And portage like 1900 meters solo. So it was a good test day. Not something I want to repeat soon. Stream just before telescope, after the intermediate portage. We got about this thing. Well, looks like Mr. Beaver's trying pretty hard to keep me behind the dike. Well, let's see if I can run over this one, but I don't think so. I can't believe I've made it. Oh, it's up feel good. Eight and a half hours of hard paddling and portaging. Great site on Telescope Lake. This is a nice protected tent site. Because I am 99% sure we're going to get thunderstorms sooner than later, too. Um, so it's hidden nice and well off the water. Lots of protection from the wind. This is a very well-used site. There's a litter. People have cut down trees. It's a little bit disappointing, but it is what it is. It's probably the well, most, one of the well, most well-used sites in Woodland Caribou. Pretty nice little fire spot here on a calm night. Now that's a quiet night. Telescope camp. It is quite a little paradise, I'm not going to lie to you. Lovely in the shade on telescope. The sun is still pretty brutally hot at six o'clock. Writing in my journal. Oh, I look about as tired as I feel. <laughs> wow. I haven't seen myself for a while. That was a long day. I think it went about 20K. I know I did 1950 meters of portaging, over five portages, I believe. Um, 
two 450 meters um, in and out of Upper Hatchet. And Upper Hatchet wasn't kind to me. No, I bucked a stiff wind across that whole sucker. And then Embryo was really, it started out really nice. And then the stupid tail on that sucker is three, four kilometers long, all against the wind again. So that was awesome. That tired me out pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you. It is nice out here, though. It's quite something. Biggest thing is being alone. Uh, I've said it before. Uh, the physical part, I don't... I like that. I, I like pushing myself physically. I like working hard. Always have. Physically. <laughs> Office is a different matter. Um, Freaking flies. Got the biting flies now. It's, it's awesome. It's because the heat's on. The heat's on big time. Got the weather forecast in the 30s. I think I might head home tomorrow. It's either going to be tomorrow or Friday, but I think I think it's going to be tomorrow. I, I know me. I think I'm just going to head out. It's early. It's four days earlier than what I wanted to do originally. But I'm journaling a lot and figuring stuff out. The biggest thing out here is the mental battle. It's not the physical battle. Like I said, the physical stuff I know I can do. It's pretty lonely. You're all alone out here, man. It's you and the bugs and the birds and the bears and honestly none of that even bothers me. It's just last night was really tough, honestly. Um I was I wasn't in a good place last night. <laughs> That's part of the reason why I pushed myself so hard today. Nights are hard. Not being scared of bears. Like like it has nothing to do with being scared sleeping alone at night in a tent. I, I'm actually not scared at all. It has nothing to do with that. It's anxiety creeps up for me. I'm not sure I'm a solo guy. I don't know. I need to think about it. I mean, I have been married for 22 years. Longer, I think. Heck, I don't know. I've been married a long freaking time. And uh, something as silly as just going to bed alone and I'm not used to that. I'm not used to, uh, you know, waking up by myself in a freaking tent, sweating because it's so freaking humid and there's mosquitoes buzzing outside your, your netting. And I've been having crazy dreams, like just vivid, vivid dreams. And I'm sure it's because of the heat and just pushing myself, right? Not eating properly. So I've been dreaming like just vivid nightmares. And <laughs> you wake up, the wolves are howling, man. Like it's... It's the real shit. It's the real shit out here. If you think it's easy, come do it. I I, uh, I invite you down. I invite you to come out here and spend two nights on your own. Just paddle into Oni. It's easy to do. Anybody can pretty much do it. You just have to be able to carry a canoe on your head. And that doesn't take long to figure it out. But I challenge you. Come into Oni for two nights. All by yourself. And camp. Let me know how it goes. We'll talk. And when you're 30, 40 kilometers further than Oni, you know, 20 kilometers further, you're really out there. Yeah. Anyway, interesting thoughts. Um, over and out. Absolute stillness in Woodland Caribou. What a perfect last night. Watching the sunset with the forest fire smoke. Heading out, 6 o'clock, Thursday morning. Telescope Lake is a lake you want calm. I would say I got it calm. 
My last day in WCPP dawned clear and calm. I paddled across Telescope Lake before traveling through the much smaller Gelmar Lakes into Oni. After a break in Oni Lake, I paddled and portaged my way back to civilization and the Suffolk Lake Road. Nice little 200 meter portage from telescope to the first of the Jomar Lakes. Beautiful morning. <laughs> Good thing I stepped out of the boat and got my feet wet right away because this trail is so freaking wet. And do I am soaked anyway. Yo, burp! Yeah, it's pretty bushy, but it's flat and easy. And it's the longest of the Jomar Lakes portages into Oni, so probably done for sure half of my paddling already today as well, so it's not bad for 7.30. Okay. Look at that nice clearing someone did. Huh, I wonder who did that. That, my dear friends, was on my first ride through here about a week ago. I knew it would pay off. Second portage of the day. Pretty easy. Here over! It's the beauty of a day. This is the lake where you exit the little caribou, actually. And... There's a pictograph. Probably you can't even see it on the video. Great sun. It's right there. Right there. Last portage from the Jomar Lakes into Oni. Nice little stream running there. Beautiful morning, birds are chirping. Yeah, burp. You might wonder why I yell for bears both ways. But often animals, especially if they're used to humans, you move through once, they assume you're done. And they resume whatever they were doing before you move through. I've seen it lots of times even just hiking far enough behind someone else. So, yeah, that's why I keep yelling. Only Lake, there's the island where Nico and I stayed in 2016. Nice sight, actually. Back at the Oni site. I'm gonna stop here for brunch. Thursday. August 9th, I think. My favorite site on Oni Lake, where I spent a few days. Boy, what a day today, eh? Look at that. Beautiful day. I mean, part of me is definitely wondering why I'm heading out today, but the other part of me is pretty excited to be heading out, and that tells me what I need to know. Last night was a good night. Um, certainly better than the night before. I think that's kind of how it works. You got to get into things, right? But it was a good night too. It was. It was still. It was. It was a beautiful night. But I've had my fill. Um, I really do. I feel that way. I've. I'm deeply satisfied. I caught a couple of nice big pike again this morning, and yeah, I could. I could stay here and catch another 25, 30 pike, and I could catch, you know, probably 50 walleye if I tried hard enough. Only Lake has a lot of walleye. Fucking walleye. But uh, I don't have to. Um, 
Yeah, I don't have to. I've, I've caught enough fish, I've paddled enough water, I've seen enough sun and wind and thunder and loons and moose. The only thing I didn't see was bear, bald eagle I saw, turkey vultures. This morning a whole gaggle of ducks, whatever that's called. A gaggle. I saw a gaggle. It was nice though in the morning sun with the mists rising off the lake. I mean, what a day, right? You, you can say, why would you leave on such a beautiful day if you didn't have to, but on the other hand, isn't that the perfect day to leave? I mean, and it's hot. I mean, you tend to forget that you actually don't want super duper hot for canoe trips. Um, if I was still traveling in this weather, if there wasn't forest fires blocking my route, um, I'd be traveling early and I'd pretty much be done by 10, 11, 12 o'clock every day. It's, it's too much. The heat just, ugh, it's relentless. So anyway, yeah, final thoughts were that this is an amazing trip. Probably one of my better canoe trips, if not the best. It was only 11 days long instead of 16 or 15 like I'd originally planned, but you know what? It was 11 really good days, and uh, I'm very grateful that I got to experience it. Uh, Woodland Caribou was good to me again. She threw some weather at me I didn't really expect necessarily in August, but uh, that's part of it. Um, you learn more through hardship than ease. That's just the way it is. I learned a lot about myself. I can do these trips physically. I wasn't too doubtful that I could. Um, mentally, I'm not so sure. I think it's. I think I might have to take someone else along on the next one. I'm sure Casey wouldn't mind joining. Maybe even Hun. I can solo carry the canoe easily now, so no big deal there. Figured out a good system for that. So, yeah, I got a kilometer of portaging left. I'm gonna write final closing thoughts in my journal here on Oni. I'm going to. Have a coffee and a cigar, and uh, yeah, then I'm going to rejoin civilization. That part I'm not 100% sure about, <laughs> but it has to happen at some point. I'll be back. Paddling out of Oni. Journey almost started. Six hundred and fifty meter portage out of Oni. Honestly, not horrible. Considering I did two thousand meters yesterday, I paddled and portaged four hours steady already today. The canoe on my head's gonna hurt. I don't know if I'll be able to do one carry. I'll try. Yo, bear. Leaving it behind for another couple of years, probably. Good last day. Long, though, effort-wise, just after yesterday. But beauty. She's a beauty. Part of me stays behind. Oh, good. Last portage of the trip. But here we are. As I sit here again, months and now years after the trip, redoing my video and going back over things in my head, I would be remiss if I didn't admit to some feelings of remorse over the way I ended my 2018 solo canoeing adventure. I spent years dreaming of doing, doing a solo canoe trip. I have notes from 2008 where I started planning the details of a solo venture. I think I probably built it up too much over the years, and reality simply didn't align with the dream. Thinking on things now, there are several lessons learned from my experience that will hopefully be used on subsequent trips. The first lesson is expectations. In the end, so much depends on them. When planning my solo trips, I always assumed stable weather. Starting this trip with two days of intense electrical storms followed by rain on the third morning was not in my plans. I have to realize that wilderness trips are more about sitting around waiting for stable conditions than actually paddling under bluebird skies with no wind. Mother Nature doesn't give a whit about some tiny anxious human buzzing around a park somewhere in the woods trying to enjoy their best life. The second lesson is downtime. I simply planned too much for this trip. I was worried about overdoing it, so I didn't plan enough. Who knew? With a group trip, you can almost always keep yourself busy by fishing or exploring. With the afternoon breeze picking up on a solo venture, you're campbound. Next trip will have much longer distances and more aggressive targets just to keep me engaged and busy. This does run the obvious risk of becoming a slog. 
Maybe I just need to better get better at handling downtime and dealing with my anxiety. Hmm. Third lesson is around raw wilderness. Traveling in the wild, especially solo, is hard. It's hard for people who are used to it and aren't alone or have a dog along, never mind city folks like myself who are really all alone. Sure, I've done hundreds of trips in the Rockies and many canoe trips and I even grew up on a farm, but raw wilderness survival is different than hiking or climbing up and down a mountain or two in a day or two. Wilderness tripping day after day is about intense storms, bugs, bugs, hunger, pain, discomfort, loneliness, and self-doubt. It's so much more than the romantic notion of dipping the paddle in a few calm lakes and calling it a day with a stringer full of fish. Of course, it's those good memories that we all hold on to, but that's the exception and not the rule. The one indisputable fact of solo wilderness tripping is discomfort, both mental and physical. The last has to do with lying. <laughs> the biggest liars in our lives are ourselves. I have to face the fact that perhaps I'm not the hardcore adventurer that I might think I am. Maybe I've been too long in the concrete jungle to be a real bushman. I certainly hope not. That's not the narrative I'm willing to conclude with just yet. I have to be brutally honest about my actual capabilities versus my perceived ones, and there is a disconnect between the two somewhere in there. But in the end, life is a journey, much like a canoe trip. The biggest lessons are uncomfortable and often hurt a little, or a lot. Since 2018, I've done many canoe trips, including two weeks with my daughter in 2019, two weeks with my wife in 2021, and again in 2023, and another shorter trip in 2022. I am still most comfortable traveling with a partner, but I also dream of dipping my paddle on a lonely lake someday with nobody else to keep me company but myself. Someday.